So please help me welcome my good buddy, Mike Hewitt. Be here. And I do live in Tennessee now. And aside from mom, um, I'm a clinical specialist with dental agent for five year medical. There is no conflict with this talk because I'm going to get uh, later on. It's lovely. My, my wife says the house is great. Um, my plan was to retire last June, actually, a year ago, July. So it's because we could buy the house and I could be done with it. I've been doing this a long time, so again, my conscience wouldn't let me with this. Got off a COVID thing and be our ability is so cool. So here I stand. So we're going to take a four hour lecture and do it in about 26 minutes. If anyone would like to copy of this, please just let me know. Michael.hewitt.com. I would really glad to PDF it and send it to you if you'd like. I'm doing two talks. I'm doing graphics now. I'm going to do a look at the strategies later on the slide. And both got shot the phone with COVID. Everything has changed. Yes. And we still don't know 20 hundred months into it what to do with these folks from a ventilator standpoint. So we're just going to do anything and everything and see what sticks. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me just go here and stand here. This is going to be a trial because I don't stand very well. Okay. All right. So let's see, why do we under, want to understand ventilator graphics? Well, according to Moody's analytics, this makes perfect sense. The most meaningful cost reduction in our industry, as well as others, is standardization of care and elimination of variation. I was taught by a dear friend uh, in Texas a long time ago um, that variation decreases uh, outcomes and, influ and influences costs and so forth. And it's just, we need to have consistency. Certainly as a discipline, we need that and we need to have it now more than ever. And I'm gonna give, this is gonna be kind of like calm. For those of you who have known me know that I get really into things, but my dear friend, Gene Gant asked me to give the Methodist version this morning, not the Baptist version, because he's got to talk after me. So we'll be calm. I'm gonna be somewhere between Methodist and Amish. Oh, it didn't work. Okay. So what parameters do graphics display? A lot of this is going to be repetitive to you. So I'll go through a lot of this quickly now because we don't have a lot of time. Pressure, flow, and time. And volume, which is calculated from the measurement of flow over time. A lot of this is going to be very elementary. So just what is positive pressure?
that was the graphic I learned best, most. It's the one that I use now. And I correlate my conversation and corroborate my conversation with my physicians by also displaying the peak pressure. Because if you've got that penguin peak that we're going to see in a minute, you're going to have pressure overshoot on top end of your peak airway. And that's the only two tools I need to have a conversation with Dr. Dan and say, we're hurting this patient's lungs. So that's the value. And honestly, truly, respiratory therapists are the graphics experts. We are it. Okay. The doctors aren't as into it unless we teach them. And of course, the older the pulmonologist is, the less likely they're going to be interested in it. And that's just the fact of life. So we are and should be the experts in graphics. So I use my pressure line curve when you speak there with pressure. That's all I need. Okay. So possible cause of this, everything I just said. The inspiratory flow might be too aggressive, which means your eye time is too short. Okay. Corrective action is reduce your inspiratory flow to maintain an adequate eye time. Uh, reduce your rise time, which most vents now have an automatic setting for the rise time. On our ventilators, when I'm teaching around the country, and I travel the country for like crazy now, the last 20 months, I teach anytime you see an automatic option in your like rise time or your termination time to flow trigger, pick auto. Let the ventilator work with the patient rather than dictate to the patient. So we're trying to change that whole paradigm from what the ventilator does to the patient to what the ventilator can do with the patient. And it makes a big difference. So other actions, reduce the airway resistance. Maybe they're having bron bronchospasm, suction, ink tube, whatever, okay? Inadequate inspiratory flow, we see this, okay? Possible cause, they're trying to take more than you're giving them. So I like to give the patient as much autonomy on the flow they want when they're participating so they can match up with the ventilator instead of me. We also, we set 60 liters of flow in volume control, okay? Whether the patient likes it or not, that's what they get every breath. Tough darts. And that's what we've done forever and ever. With some of these new modes when we can let, uh, allow for uh, variable flow. Okay, so inadequate inspiratory flow. It's not letting me change. So we're going to move this way to do it. Okay, prolonged inspiratory time. We've seen that. You can see that indicated there with a little squiggly little line. An in, uh, presence uh, in, in the inspiratory plateau that the patient has finished inhaling before the ventilator is um, cycling. So again, matching. We can choose our mode so that the patient and ventilator work together instead of us trying to guess. So this can cause increased work of breathing, just secret of the ventilator, we fix that with sedation, can increase intrathoracic pressure, compromising your cardiovascular status, of course, pinching off the, the vasculature, giving right-sided uh, inadequate uh, return flow to the heart. And you can get insufficient, I'm trying to talk too fast, insufficient expiratory time and gas traffic, which is cumulative. Okay. Flow, inadequate expiratory time, auto peeping. We're all very familiar with that. We don't come back to zero. You can see where the circle is there with the yellow. We haven't come back to flow to zero, that expiratory back to the zero baseline. And that also can add intrinsic peak and add, become cumulative. And eventually you're going to have a problem. It may manifest itself in the volumes you know, are going to get altered because you can't, nothing can come out because it's all trapped. And certainly you'll see our hemodynamics start to look more. That's a medical term. Okay, flow rate form problems, prolonged expiratory time is what it looks like right there. Okay, there's the prolonged. It's not supposed to look like that. Prolonged uh, expiratory time for bronchial constriction, again. So, 
you can either do your ventilator adjustments or if you feel the patient's having a bronchospasm, you certainly are going to administer a half a gallon of albuterol and see that your time improves. It's in fact a bronchospasm, your expiratory flow will get better. All the things we just talked about. Okay, Lee, this is always one I love. Okay, are there any students? Okay, anybody that's been doing this less than five years? Put your hand up. Okay, go ahead, be proud. Okay. Hopefully, you haven't been ruined yet. I figured, truly, I figured after five years, you're pretty much going to be what you're going to be. And that's another conversation. So, leaks, cuff leaks. I'll tell you, as one of the less experienced therapists, always look and see if the patient's got a chest tube. We're always the ones that find this. We've searched high and low. Everybody's frustrated. Where's the leak? Where's the leak? Where's the leak? We've done all our things that we do. Look and see if the patient, particularly in trauma settings, if they got a chest tube. And watch what happens during the inspiratory phase to your pleuroback. If it gets all jumping up and down, there's your chest, there's your leak. We're always the ones that find that. Something will tuck in the back of your head. Okay. Possible causes. You know, expiratory is less than the inspiratory, which it would be if it's going out the chest tube or wherever it may be going, or it may be going interstitially, which they'll become to look like the Michelin puffed up guy eventually. So check your cough, run the circuit, check the bias flow, and look for a chest tube. Inappropriate flow trigger, you can see here, those are little breaths. The patient's trying to trigger either our flow trigger set too high or our pressure trigger. 15 minutes, okay. I'm going to start moving like this now. Okay. We have to look at our flow trigger. Flow may be too high, they just they're trying to trigger, but they can't change the flow enough, or it's even more pronounced in pressure trigger. Okay, so that's something we can see. And watch your patients are trying to take a breath and it's not triggering, but your trigger mechanisms. Same with your pressure. Okay. You correct excess of inspiratory time. This is your trigger, expiratory trigger, which always defaults to 25%. That's another thing. Again particularly for the younger folks that have been practicing as long as some of us have been practicing probably too long. Um, <laughs> just speaking tired. for myself. Um, your expiratory trigger in the modes that it's appropriate in, that it's active in, always defaults to 25%. Every ventilator on the planet, okay? That may or may not be correct, especially if they're in pressure support. That patient's still trying to breathe in and you go, I know, but that they're gonna become unhappy when you say, geez, you know what? They failed their SBT. Let's give them some propofol and we'll check again tomorrow. So always look if you have um, excessive inspiratory time, look and see if you can correct that by adjusting that expiratory trigger. Loops. Ah, this is a beautiful thing. Flow volume and pressure volume. That's all I need with my peak pressure to have any kind of conversation with the most resistant position. They say, nope. So bad. I mean, it's okay. I will chart one in, you know, informed position of, you know, however you word it, not nastily, because I'll get you in trouble. You know, advised position of, you know, scenario with too much volume, be a be a trigger for the graphics, position advised. We'll leave it alone. You just you've done your thing. But this is beautiful. Okay, flow volume loop. I don't use this much. Um, because in the acute care setting, I might use it more in the um, long-term setting. So that's the inspiratory phase on the top and expiratory is the blue, exhalation is underneath, and your volume is plotted horizontally, and flow is plotted vertically. And the ventilators now, you can put up 100 different graphics. Pressure volume loop, inspiratory side is on the right, expiratory side is on the left. That one's not too bad. The pressure is plotted horizontally and volume is vertically. We've all seen these, right? The angle of the football is a dynamic compliance. The beautiful, the most beautiful pressure volume curve you can see looks like a football at about a 45 degree angle. Now, it may flatten out a little bit if it's the New England Patriots because they deflate their football. <laughs> so they're not quite like the same for any of you New England fans. Okay, so here we go. Various shapes, okay? Positive pressure breath, the counterclockwise motion is the positive pressure and the spontaneous will be clockwise. 
Okay. So this one in the middle, the patient triggered that breath, right? You can see the yellow, they triggered. It's a full supported breath, but they triggered it above the set rate. <clears throat> and this is us sitting here with the occasional yawn you're doing because I'm boring. But this is us. It's not natural for us to have positive pressure. But
electric or combined control, assist control, which is still way too popular. What's that? The patient wants more flow than you're giving them. They're sucking the thing inside out. Okay. So at the very least, you got to up their flow or consider a different mode that you don't control the flow. There you go. This is pressure support. Okay. You're telling the patient to breathe on your own, then 10 over 5. The patient would like something bigger because they're taking bigger binds and they're again trying to run away from the vent, they'll either inside out or flatten out. Give them more pressure support. Inflection points, we talk about this upper and lower. The pressures snap on both ends. Okay. I'm running out of time. Oh hell. I got done five minutes early. Let's start over. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this five minutes. I was going to do it later, but we got a couple of minutes and we'll be right on schedule. I've been a respiratory therapist for 45 years. doctors whatever is dropping off a cliff and people are walking away um i want to applaud each and every one of you whether it be in you work in home health whether you work in acute care facilities or now the next big deal and i have spent the last eight months uh parts of the last eight months installing our ventilators in LTACs. okay that are used to a sprees and trilogies and all that stuff, they don't cut it anymore because LTACs are now critical care facilities. I've been preaching for 10, 12 years that one day the LTACs, the LTAC folks and home health folks have been discouraged for a long time. But I've always felt one more sentence. She just gave me this. Okay. Um, LTACs, if you're working at LTAC, your time has come. I was just in one two weeks ago. We're doing Full blown critical care with our ventilator, he's LTAC. Okay. I said 12 years ago this was going to happen, but it, it had nothing to do with COVID. It was the fact that there were 70 million baby boomers retired. Tens of millions of them were in the service, including my father, who passed away in 2014 from emphysema because he got three cigarettes the whole time he was in the Navy during the Korean War. So our value is up here. I applaud you all for going each and every day because it is pure hell. And this, and this we're all used to being tired. I'm exhausted. The psychological devastation amongst caregivers is unbelievable. Take care of yourself, please. Do what you got to do. Take care of yourselves. So, hey, Gene, buddy, I did the honest version. I didn't go back this on. So, thank you all for what you do. I hope this We'll be over there uh, all day today. Tomorrow, I'll be still coming back to talk about lung protector strategies, which has gone all that with COVID in just a little bit. Thank you very much. Well, this one's working now, and we got the tools now.